two XB70s built only to be used for test. And they were extremely effective. Uh, they went three times the speed of sound, flew nearly uh, to 80,000 feet, and the test program was very successful. This supersonic research plane has already taken a number of steps toward Mach 3, 2,000 miles an hour at 70,000 feet. It's completed phase one of flight test, pushed well past the speed of sound. Its structure has survived a severe proof loading program. Most recently, it sustained supersonic speed for over one hour. First flights are always significant, but this one was especially so. A totally new aerodynamic design was involved. Materials and processes never before used were getting their initial try. Coming up on power. Ten seconds. Five, four, uh, three, two, break release now. Acceleration was rapid. Liftoff occurred under 5,000 feet. A normal climb was set. After feeling out the controls, the gear handle was placed at up. The gear went through the first cycle, folding the bogies, into the second, then stopped. Gear has rotated and stopped, is not folding. An alternate plan with gear down kept the plane in flight for over one hour. Both pilots' comments and the data obtained showed low speed handling qualities to be very favorable. 50 feet. 30. 20. 10. 5. A brake had locked. The two rear tires blew and started burning, but the forward two wheels supported the load. There was no difficulty in bringing the plane to a safe straight line stop. Two weeks later, the plane was out on the Edwards runway for the second takeoff. The plan for this first series of flights was to establish subsonic handling qualities, then move up to Mach 1 and beyond. With the gear safely up, they leveled off at 16,000 feet and ran a long series of stability and flutter checks. Then climbing toward 35,000 feet, a warning light blinked on. A hydraulic system had lost pressure. Now normal precautionary procedures were used, the gear was lowered immediately, an approach was set for Rogers Dry Lake. Touchdown was normal. Drag chutes and brakes decelerated the plane to a routine stop. A week later, the third flight. Most of the low speed handling qualities were known now. With confidence, speed was pushed up to 0.95 and a data series recorded. Then afterburners were lit and the XB-70 moved past the speed of sound to Mach 1.1. Three times it made the jump from sub to supersonic. Fifteen minutes were spent above Mach 1. There was also minor loss of paint. Where the paint was applied too thick, flexing of the structure loosened it and it peeled off. The B-70 was into supersonic testing just 21 days after first flight. Another major area of interest was folding the wingtips. The tips fold down to increase directional stability. This is equivalent to increasing the vertical tail area, but without the attendant weight and drag penalties. Moving the tips down also reinforces compression lift effects and shifts the center of lift forward to minimize trim drag. With tips down to 25 degrees, full afterburner was selected and speed increased from 0.95 to Mach 1.4, almost halfway to the goal, three times the speed of sound. Phase one testing was completed in 34 days with 55 minutes logged above Mach 1. Total flight time, over five hours. Next on the schedule was a complete proof loading. 
Lifting, controlling, and stabilizing surfaces were loaded to their limits. Deflection was as predicted, and the surfaces met all requirements of high-speed flight. After thorough proof loading, the plane was ready for Flight 5, the start of Phase 2 tests. The aim of this series is to move steadily toward Mach 3 and 70,000 feet. The bulk of data will be taken above Mach 1. Procedure first lowers the tips to 25 degrees. Accelerate to Mach 1.4, then move them fully down 65 degrees. With the plane shaped for high speed, throttles were advanced and Mach 1.6 was reached, a new high for B-70 performance. The sixth mission was at heavy weight, 457,000 pounds at takeoff. Data was taken during climb to test altitude. At 35,000 feet, a hydraulic system showed a pressure drop requiring immediate lowering of the landing gear and return to base. The touchdown on the lake bed was at the heaviest landing weight recorded, 370,000 pounds. Pressure loss was traced to a leaking hydraulic line. Flight 7 was especially significant. At 494,000 pounds, the takeoff was the heaviest to date. Total time aloft was one hour and 37 minutes, with 62 minutes of sustained supersonic flight. Much of the 62 minutes was spent above Mach 1.4. We're foot the wingtips down on three, two, one, now. Those tips look real steady. Flight with wingtips down is now becoming routine, and the tips move to full down early in the test. As speed goes up, chase planes can only stay with the flight for short periods. Most of the time, it cruises alone. How you doing, Chase 2? I can stay with you for probably about another uh, 10 minutes. A top speed of Mach 1.87 was recorded, and an altitude 50,000 feet was reached. In addition to new speed and altitude highs, much stability and control data was put as the plane streaked out over the desert test range. Joe, that's three sisters there north of us. A good ways from Yal. If you got another chase down there, get him in the air. After decelerating, engines were shut down and restarted. There were two restarts made at Mach 1.4. Another was made at a lower speed. Okay, starter up, Fitz. Air start is on. Marker 5160, throttle coming to idle. Inlet ducts, bypass doors, and ram air scoop were successfully operated. On this one hour, 37 minute flight, the XB-70A maintained supersonic speeds for one hour. On the 24th of March, the XB-70A took off at a weight in excess of 500,000 pounds. This lift-off weight was the heaviest yet recorded by any aircraft. As the aircraft reached Mach 2, the inlet ducts were started for the first time. Starting the inlets is accomplished by adjustment of the ramps and bypass doors to position the shock in the throat of the inlet. At an altitude of 56,000 feet, a speed of Mach 2.14 was reached. During this flight, supersonic speeds were sustained for one hour and 14 minutes, another new record. 40 minutes were at Mach 2 or above. At the end of flight number eight, test time totaled 22 minutes, three hours and 49 minutes of which were at supersonic speeds. Future missions are planned to steadily increase speed and altitude, moving thousand miles at 70,000 feet. Uh, unfortunately, there was an accident in 1966 that had nothing to do with the test. It was a, uh, an air-to-air -air collision, so, but the test program was extremely successful. And everything about the XB-70 is exotic. Every single thing about the XB-70. It uh, had wingtips that drooped down, to take advantage of something called compression lift. And basically the idea is the XB-70 at supersonic speed is creating these shock waves. And 
engineers figured out a way to harness those shock waves so that the XP-70 actually rides on those shock waves and it generates additional lift. And the wingtips, which were alone as large as the wings on an aircraft, a smaller aircraft, would droop down and help contain that compression uh, and take advantage of the compression lift. There was a large move in 2002, and uh, the existing galleries were created, the Cold War Gallery, World War II Gallery, Korean War Gallery, and so forth. And the idea was to move all of the aircraft that were research and development, move them together in one place. And unfortunately, that place was on the guarded side of the base. But the idea was that when the next building was built, that then they would all move together as one unit over to the new building, rather than tear apart galleries pulling R&D airplanes out of this one and that one, they would all come over here together. So to see the conclusion of that plan, uh, the vision that was imagined 15 years ago, to see them uh, come over here together and see the XB-70 move back is really very wonderful. Uh, many of us have been waiting about 15 years for this to happen, so it's exciting. Another part of the XB-70 were its advanced engines. Uh, they were test engines, they were not production engines. In fact, there were only about 30 or so J-93 engines built. It used a special fuel, JP-6. And the thrust of a J-93, one of these engines on the XB-70, is equivalent to the thrust on a frontline advanced fighter flying today. We've been very fortunate to be able to see some of these aircraft moving in and see this gallery beginning to form. Uh, we're very excited when we'll be able to show the public in uh, 2016 and uh, they'll be able to see the Research and Development Gallery, the Space Gallery, the Presidential Gallery, and the Global Reach Gallery. And uh, the staff here is working feverishly to get to that date and so the public can finally see these wonderful artifacts on display.